what is it that you think now I'm leaving that every engineering student in South Africa must know? It's definitely that it's worth it. Um, mm. We are living in a country that has a very high unemployment rate. Mm. And when you finish the degree, your life changes before your very eyes. I don't know, even there's, there's, there's a group of my classmates who even had the Engineering Council of South Africa, and they recognize three tiers of engineering. There's, if you did a national diploma, you, are, you can register as a professional engineering technician. If you did a B and tech, and in the old system that would be the B tech, that is a professional engineering technologist. And if you did the four year um, NQF level eight degree, mm. that is when you can register as a professional engineer. So that is the difference between the, the, the three, you know, at, in engineering at college, engineering at university, oh, engineering okay. at, at uh, yes. the This one then, here's the kicker. Mm. The one at college, if you go to a college, that is not uh, hello hello everyone welcome back to gift varsity uh, tv is gift uh, bozakana your host uh, today i have an honor uh, to have uh, l- let me allow him to introduce himself hello sir hello doctor <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bruno, i am dr daniel ramutela and i am a senior lecturer in the department of electrical engineering at the university of cape town wow I have a whole senior lecture. <laughs> wow, it's an honor to have you on our channel, uh, Doctor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, no so let's talk about you. You like your educational background. Where are you from? Where am I from? As in, where do I? Like where you started schooling? Primary school. Oh, pri- I am from a town. I wouldn't say small town. I am from a town in the Free State. Uh, called Kronstadt. I think it's a mid-sized uh, town. Um, where did I start school? In the actual school. Okay. Uh, yeah, the primary school. The primary school it was Kron Primary. So I, I went to a, a, a Kron Primary, um, which was an English school. Okay. And then for high school, I went to Kronstadt High School, which was more of an Afrikaans type school. Uh, mixed mixed English Afrikaans, so yeah, yeah, that's my background, and that's oh, yeah, that's where I went to school. Yeah, oh, high school. So, which subject did you do in high school? Which subject did I do? So, I did uh, maths, physical science, life science, and accounting. So, yeah, that's the stream. I've recently, yeah, I've, I've recently learned that, and I don't think. That's not a common stream, yeah. but in my school, that was the science stream since we didn't have geography for some okay. reason. So, the science stream would have accounting. So, the reason I took that group of subjects was because it was flexible in terms of, irrespective of what you want to do in metric, you have one of everything kind of if the commerce is represented by accounting, yeah. then you have life science for the you want to get experience in. The medical stuff and physical science etc so that's why i took that oh, that grouping oh, yeah right. well, i also did math paper three and advanced program mathematics i don't know if you oh. know that one hey, i know i have never heard about yeah i heard yeah. about math paper three yeah there's, there's this thing called it's not in the nsc is it nsc the the the, the public the school system yes. it's in the private school okay. system advanced program mathematics uh, which used to be called additional maths. So what that is, it's varsity level maths yeah. that you're doing. So if I were to, which is I definitely recommend it if you want to do engineering. Because yes. in my first year, I had covered most of the maths in high school in advanced program uh, oh. mathematics. So I had a separate certificate from IEB. Oh, not okay. IEB, I don't know. That private oh. school business, I have a separate certificate for the, the advanced program. Okay. mathematics but yeah it's not part of the main curriculum okay. it's something separate so if you have anywhere i had to go to another school an actual african school and i actually learned that in africa oh. i can't speak i can't speak Afrikaans for the life of me yeah. to, for the most part but i had to you, you can you can imagine the firkans vorto and men in square of negative one <laughs> so the whole class was in africa but luckily the textbook was in english I had nothing in the class, but it was a very useful subject. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. 
So you, you did it as an extra subject or you were in the curriculum of the private? No, no, no. I was in the public school. Oh, public but school. Oh. there was a school nearby that offered it to the oh. kids for a cost. And I just did that. Okay. Um, I just wanted to do something extra. I don't even know why I did it, but it was uh, lucky. Okay. <laughs> it's lucky that I ended up doing that because it ended up being the bulk of first year magic. And you're talking about my I you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're really doing that already. Oh, nice right. All right. So you 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 decided now uh, to okay before we go there. So in high school, what kind of a student were you? Were you, were you going to a yeah, top achiever, or just average, or I I was a decent student, I guess. I was a lazy student. <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest, I was not. A, I did not really find school very challenging, so I, I was coasting. <laughs> yeah. So I was having a very, yeah, it was just, uh, just, so I was not like doing different sports and, and, and doing, uh, I, was, I was just in school, uh -huh. just there. I spent most of my time with gadgets and, and playing around with uh, gadgets because at home, growing up, we didn't have DSTV. Uh -huh. But what my father did is, he's, instead of that, he got us a computer long before it became a thing like yeah. i'm from the floppy disk uh, generation so my father was just like everybody in the house wanted to dstv he was like no he brought a computer and then we would i spent most of the time just playing around so we went from floppy disk to the cds you know, writing cds and doing i still have my pile of discs i wrote when i was still in high school i don't use it now because we don't, yeah. we don't use it then but yeah, yeah. so i spent most of the time just Playing around with different gadgets and 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 yeah, not really too focused on school, but I I I, I never let my marks go down. I yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, all right. So you you did make like maintain good marks in high no, school. No, no, no. Definitely, I I did uh, maintain good marks and and I particularly liked maths. Oh. That is the one subject I'd say and which I'd recommend if you want to do engineering. Yes. Like maths. If you don't like maths, you're not going to like engineering because it's maths. Yeah. The, from first year till your final year, it's applied maths uh, throughout the entire stream. So it's good that I kind of enjoyed maths, which is why I did the um, advanced program, mathematics. And I know that when I, even after I got a distinction for that, the lady that was teaching us was shocked. And she came to me and was like, oh, what are you going to be studying? And I was like, engineering. She's oh, like, oh, okay, you made the, the, the right choice right. and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, so based on that, I just wanted to ask. So engineering is something that you've always wanted to study. Or is yeah. there other things probably like, you know, that if you make, if you are good in high school, teachers used to say that yes. you want, you're going to be a doctor, teach your parents, yes. I think I wanted to be a doctor um, growing up, yes. right, yes. until I got to grade 10. And then I did life science yes. and I hated it. <laughs> oh, I, I hated life science with a burning uh, passion. Yeah. I could do it, but I hated it was... You have to remember all of these difficult names and and the tests. They give you a bit of a blob and you, you are mapping. It was not an enjoyable thing for me. So at that point, I decided that I don't want to be a doctor yes. because this is all like the, the anatomy. I, I don't want to do that. And then at that point, it was a process of elimination. So I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew what I didn't want to do. I looked at accounting as well. I was good at accounting. Yes. But even though I've learned that the accounting in high school is not the accounting they do here. Getting to accounting, I was just like, I don't like, I, I wouldn't want to do this for the rest of my life. And then the people that, some people came to try to encourage us to, like the, the top students in the school, would you want to go do actuarial science or something like that? So they came and they encouraged us when they described the field they were like lots of money they described the field i was like yeah. i don't want to spend the rest of my life doing that as well so and then somebody had said no good at maths engineering consideration oh. so i started looking at the list of engineering and this was like before we had widespread oh. access 
to the internet. So I started, started ticking them off. It's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want. Then I saw this one thing, which it wasn't offered everywhere at the time, computer engineering. It's like, oh, oh I like computers. I've been spending most of my time oh. playing around with computers. I had no idea what it was. I just saw computer engineering. And I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. Yeah. All right, all right. Okay, so uh, you completed your high school very well, right? So yeah. with with distinction, couple of distinctions. Yeah. 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 All right. I don't remember the exact amount, but quite a few. <laughs> quite uh, a few. What I'm proud of is the trifecta: maths, maths, P3, oh. and advanced oh. program oh. mathematics. All right, all right. Really, all right. Yeah. Okay. So where did you start if? Uh, university now which university did you decide to study at yeah i decided to study at the university of pretoria oh. uh, because my brother had studied in pretoria and was in pretoria i think so i knew about the university you can imagine in the small well, it's not a small town but somewhere in the city there's not much information going around it's just little pockets you have there so I knew about the University of Pretoria quite well because my brother had been there and I knew a few people who had gone there and I'd heard they have a very good engineering program. I can't remember who told me that. You just know what people say back then. You can't search for yourself. So people had said it. So I was like, okay, I'll go to the University of Pretoria. And that's where I applied. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, you, you did, you chose a computer engineering. Yes. Oh, so they accepted you for computer engineering. Yes. Okay. So how was your first year as a student now in engineering at university now quite different from high school? How did yeah. you survive? <laughs> <laughs> what are the challenges you come across now? I'd say the first year of university is like the mix a mixture of the best and worst year of my life. <laughs> uh, because yeah. Uh, as you would know, engineering is not is not a particularly easy uh, course. Um, so there's obviously a lot to do um, when you're studying engineering. There's a lot of content. There's a lot of whatnot. But at the same time, I enjoyed the university environment in terms of I met most of my friends today. I met when I was in first year. We are all doing different things, but we met there. So you kind of get your community, you met, you meet your people. That part is nice. You start to play around in a field and learn exactly what is it that I chose. Because I don't know. I, I just like I like computers, but computer engineering is not <laughs> is not computers uh, per se. So I'm starting to learn about what this thing is, and I, uh, luckily I ended up liking what it is. So yeah, it, it was very demanding. And back at the University of Pretoria, I remember this thing called Engineering Test Week. Yo, they have all of your tests in one week. All like uh, there's a week. There's no lectures. There's all tests. Sounds good in theory, but <laughs> but like yeah, that was like that week. People didn't bath. You know, you you arrive in the lecture venue, it smells like body odor. It's, 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 it's that kind of chaotic kind of space and you kind of most people you meet in first year don't make it past first year so you keep losing a lot of soldiers along the way but but yeah it's a, it's a mixed bag i think i think first year was fun so challenging in terms of you're independent the concepts are like i said high school was not very challenging for me this was the start of me actually being challenged academically where you really the amount of work in high school you can spend weeks on a chapter here you arrive in a class and then it's like well that's chapter one now we're in chapter <laughs> two now <laughs> you know you just keep moving and at some stage you're like and one of the courses we did in like you have advanced program mathematics one of the courses we did first year electronics had complex numbers when you're starting to solve some electronics and power and stuff and when people were like what is this no like I is showing up, what is this? And then there's matrix multiplication. That's second year math. And there's a lot of stuff. And then the lecturer was like, I'm not here to teach you maths, I'm here to teach you electronics. So it's up to you to figure it out. Luckily, I really I didn't necessarily do the, the matrix multiplication stuff, but we've already done the complex numbers in, in high school. So but we, we can kind of get how kind of survival of the fittest and, and challenging uh, first year becomes, yeah. 
year, but you survived first year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Pass, did, is there any time whereby you failed a test or? Uh, yeah, test? definitely. Um, I failed a test. This actual first year electronics, where it required a particular calculator that I had not bought. Right? Yes. The calculator does matrix multiplication for you, solves complex numbers for you, and the calculator was a bit expensive. I don't afford the calculator at the time. So I was like, ah, arrogant uh, nyara. I'm like, I'll free flow. I'll do everything from first principles. Mm. This whole thing. Not only am I going to solve the circuit, I'll do the maths from first principles. I thought I'd do that. And the structure of the course was answer only, no formula sheet. I don't remember. I, no, <laughs> it, did, it did not work. <laughs> It did not work out well uh, for me that approach. I ended up, I still did not end up buying the calculator. In the end, I ended up passing the course. But the first thing I did after that was go beg my parents and I told them that for the rest of this program, I've been told this is a foundational course in the Department of Electrical Engineering. So I'm going to need to be able to do these things. If I'm doing it first principles, I'm not going to survive. Can you please get this calculator? And my parents were like, okay, it's fine, we'll make a plan. And then things got a little bit easier. So oh. even when I became a lecturer eventually and I was teaching that course, I would tell my students, if you have to beg, borrow, or steal, get the calculator. Like, this is not a, <laughs> this is not a game. <laughs> We're not playing games here. Yeah. Get the calculator, right? It doesn't matter who you have to beg. It doesn't matter what you do. If you don't have the calculator, you're, you are going to struggle through this course. And you don't want to be hindered because of a tool that is available to you. Because, like, solving things from first principles when you don't have to is not, mm -hmm. yeah, not advisable. All right. So you, you said you did fail your first test, but you bounced back and passed the course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, eventually right. I was able to get okay. to, to there. I think I just have this, I'm a, I'm a bit competitive. Mm. So every time things go a little bit wrong, I go into kind of overdrive. My life kind of evaporates before my very eyes. People will see me just disappear. My friends will even tell you there are stages where I just disappear. And you, it's bad because like now I have to go and it's so similar. for that one i had to disappear for a long time and learn how to work at the same pace as my classmates who are using the calculator but not having the calculator so you can imagine i i i, I had to really go deep and that was not my only course i i had other courses as well um but luckily those ones weren't going badly those ones were going quite well so i i kind of had the the freedom to kind of focus on this one course knowing that at least i was strong in these other courses so i okay. I, I can't spend the time on this one that i'm struggling okay. with okay 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 so so the, is there other challenges you came across as an engineering student there was a time whereby maybe you, you wanted to give up or to drop out because oh, of definitely. i don't think you're an engineering student is in the system if you have not thought about <laughs> like, is this what i want to do is this worth it <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 definitely. I think multiple times, particularly in my first year, mm -hmm. that was it. But that's why it's very important when you have like a community of people and where you also have an outlet. If you read books, read a book. If you like going out, go out. Make the time to do something outside of just uh, studying because half the battle is in your head which is also what i'm always telling my students half the battle is in your head especially in those formative years because you start to question you know, you come from wherever you come from most engineering people were the smart people from where they came from now everybody's starting to question life like no like yeah i got all of these distinctions and but now you're in a room full of copy paste everybody where they came from they were the smart person <laughs> now there's a different kind of hierarchy like, so like half the battle is in your head most people give up in their mind before going anywhere. And that's part of just not having a means to kind of, I'm relaxing, I'm regrouping, mm -hmm. I'm kind of trying to find a way. And particularly electrical engineering with all of its sub-disciplines is a very practical uh, discipline where you have to implement a lot. Most of what you do in class, typically you're going to have to implement, especially as the years keep 
climbing. You're going to be expected to do all of that. And at the University of Pretoria, they had a thing, yeah, their volamulum, if you will, is it works. If it doesn't work, you're failing. And you need to pass the practicals to pass the course. You're not going to write the exam without passing the practical. Mm. So that's the rule. If it doesn't work, it's automatic fail. You'll get a second chance. And if it doesn't work on the second chance, you've already failed the course. So there's a lot of anxiety around having to build these things because if it doesn't work, your mark depends on how well it works. But if you have to design something and you add a demo, and it doesn't work <laughs> like yeah so so what that ends up breeding is there's no time for studying mm. as much as the years first year you still have time because it's not very very practical from second year there's no time to study you just project after project after project under these strict circumstances the time to study is very very limited and you know that they just keep piling on so by the time test becomes there's this amount of work you have a demo just before test week. That's your last demo. Each course has a demo. You have a demo just before test week. Now you're starting to actually study and look at the material. Yeah, yeah. So then you just, it just always feels like, is this worth it? Like, yeah, the whole point, and then in computer engineering in particular, because it's a kind of a blend between electrical engineering and computer science, we lost a lot of people to computer science. Mm -hmm. At some stage, would be like, I, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> and then, and then I'm going to try that. I'm going to do a lot of programming because yeah. like, I'm, I'm not too bad at programming. Yeah. Let me go try my luck in computer science because what's going on here is <laughs> not very nice. So we yeah. lost a lot of people. And then when you see them, when you're losing either people who are leaving university altogether or people who are just going to try their luck in computer science, and when they get to computer science, all of a sudden they have lives. Right. I remember there was this other girl who were in the trenches together first year, second year, the end of second year, she's like, nope, she goes to computer science. Like, she was never a makeup person, no makeup, nothing. She was, she was just a... Then she goes to computer science, all of a sudden she's makeup, and she's always looking nice. <laughs> One day she asks me, she's like, hey, can we go to Love Task to watch soccer? I'm like, I've got... I'm very nervous. She's like, oh, you're such a nerd. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> now you have time. Now I'm a nerd. But just last year, you were with me in the trenches. Yeah. So you see all of that and you start thinking, maybe I should just go try my luck in another field. Mm. And yeah, it's very like, like it's bad in terms of just losing every year I lost. I had to make new friends. So I have friends, they fail. The next year, I make a new group of friends, they fail. But luckily in third year, the friends I made there, um, well, my classmates that were in my actual class, those ones, by the time you get to that point, they were kind of fine. So the people I met in third year, I just kind of carried through. But in the first two years, it's like a bloodbath. There's a lot of... <laughs> but I think once you get to third year, you're kind of stuck. Even yeah. It's going to take you a while. A lot of people just kind of stick it out. All right, all right. Guys, there's no time in engineering to do makeup. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right all right all right so uh if i may ask what kept you going throughout your degree until the end of your degree what is that one thing that even the ideas of like to want to give up and stuff like what kept you going like yeah um first which was very important i'm glad i made sure i chose something i liked mm -hmm. well i'm lucky that i i didn't choose it knowing i'd like it i assumed i would but i eliminated everything where i could see i don't like this i did the process of elimination mm -hmm. so when you're in that space as bad as it was everything that was happening i enjoyed um i enjoyed everything i enjoyed the practical nature um, in first year, one of the computer science courses was, was, was brutal. And part of the project was we had to develop a fantasy chess game. Yo, first principles, no libraries. You are just doing everything from scratch. It was tough. I enjoyed it. And with every year, every time you have to develop something and you're learning something new, I kind of liked what I was doing. So it, it kept oh, me going. Okay. The other thing is the idea of going back to Kronstadt was <laughs> like, I, 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 
Yeah, I, it was just like I need. I came here. I left with people saying, "Hey, they were smart about it," and now I'm going to go back <laughs> and and become a statistic. I, I don't know what to become yeah. um, a statistic. So the fear of being a failure, particularly in my parents' eyes, we had a who were just saying, "Hey, you know, so yeah. I did not want to disappoint my parents." at all especially since they were doing their best but if whenever i'm saying i need x whatever they needed to do they would make a plan to make sure i'd get it i i did not want to disappoint my parents but the main thing more than the fear of disappointment was definitely the liking what i'm doing i'm like i'm, I'm enjoying this like every time i have to build something and it works there's nothing like we slept in the labs. By the time we get to third year, we were in the labs. We <laughs> yeah. bond with people in the labs because like that's what you're doing. You're trying to get it to work, right? When you're in the labs, there was this other third year project we were doing where we'd had to build the power supply, and then that was part of a broader fan system and whatnot. In that lab, since you're plugging it directly to the power supply, you're dealing with very very heavy current that's coming in here. So in that lab, for example, things are exploding, like. <laughs> I don't even know why they trusted us. <laughs> they are not friendly or anything. It's just like you're third year now. We trust you. Plug it into the wall. Things are exploding. I even at some stage I had a transformer that we we had uh, not plugged it in correctly into the wall, and then dark smoke just started, and then there was the and then people were diving. But we can't just leave because if we leave it, it will explode and cause so much damage. So you have to unplug it. It seems a bit traumatic, but it's, a, yeah. <laughs> it's very fun because eventually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So eventually you, you kind of see what you're working towards. So every year it was just very exciting to see like, but I survived hmm. the previous year. What do they have in store for me? And I promise you, they don't disappoint. Oh, I'll give you that. Advice. Every year they keep topping themselves. <laughs> they keep bringing in a different dynamic to try to challenge you in a different way. And you kind of every year as they start to mold the engineer, then you start to think like an engineer. The problems become a bit more complex as you are uh, solving them. Okay. Okay. Wow, that's kind of risky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's still everything fine, no matter. Okay. 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 So uh, you completed your degree now uh, mm -hmm. in computer engineering, right? So how did you feel now when you finally complete? Uh, your your engineering degree while others just you know uh, it was it was a moment i think of all of them of all of my graduations of all of everything that undergraduate one was the one that was like yo like i remember because you never know like that's the thing of engineering doesn't matter if you're always just on the edge of your seat so even when i was in my final year and all i had was final year project i submitted my report I did the demo. It seems to have gone well. You never know. <laughs> so I was sitting. I was sitting there wondering, like, what happens. And then I, I think I had one other course. Those marks came on. That one I was fine. I knew like, this one. I'm fine. So finally, a project is like, which I'd say it's it's like a whole event. Mm. Like, and it's a lot of anxiety around. Like, is your capstone project? You need. You've learned all of this over the previous years now build something you're an engineer design from scratch on your own no groups with a report and you're going to be presenting to a group of professors and at the university of Victoria, they also had somebody from industry who comes in and sits in and it's kind of like you're in a boardroom setting and they're like okay what have you done and then they start poking holes into your argument trying to see can you reason and defend your project like an engineer are you ready to go out into industry into the world so that was also like brutal because we heard in Pretoria there people still fail like you could pass everything get to project fail project and then you'll fail project once you fail project you may fail it the next year so you have this anxiety around is it so your graduation it depends, depends on the it depends working on the, the project yeah, yeah, yeah it depends on it must work oh, well, I'm wrong is it works that's when you passed okay. <laughs> You're failing if it doesn't, if it doesn't work. Yes, fast. Yes, yes, if it works, then the conversation starts. Then the negotiations start about, right, can you actually pass? Do you know what you did? Now they start to go through your engineering design process. 
your design they start poking holes in it like are you really ready do you know what you did do you understand all of your design decisions because something can work but you just put things together but you don't understand like the fundamentals of how it works if you don't understand the fundamentals you're feeling right and that's what we try to gauge from the report and also from the presentations in trying to to, to get that so that in like until you get that confirmation that you passed you never know but when i got it that day like i i was just like like, oh. Have you ever just been speechless? Like, like, <laughs> yeah, like right yeah. And the first thing I just called my parents, like, I'm graduating. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, are you sure from that? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm graduating. Like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done with this. And it's like, yeah. So that, that's how yeah, I oh, felt. Okay. Yeah, I felt fantastic. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. That's great. It was the best moment of your life, oh, right? It was. Okay. So now you, with engineering, you, you come with honors or. Did you like go for your honors because yeah yeah engineering comes with honors like it's a four year uh, oh okay let me first say there are, I don't know you know the engineering council of South Africa yeah you should know hey, they, they, what is this city doing <laughs> <laughs> so like, engineering degrees in South Africa by law are accredited by this body called the mm-hmm. engineering council of South Africa and they recognize three tiers of engineering. There's, if you did a national diploma, you are you can register as a professional engineering technician. Yes. If you did a B Eng Tech, and in the old system that would be the B Tech, that is a professional engineering technologist. And if you did the four year um, NQF level eight degree, mm. that is when you can register as a professional engineer. So oh. that is that tier. So that's where we are at a UCT UPS. If it's a four year degree. It's it's that. So it's whether you're doing BSc Eng or B Eng or B Eng. I think UJ they've got B Eng. If if you do one of those three, that's it. So that four year degree is an honors equivalent, which is why you have your capstone project. Remember, yeah. honors is gonna have a research project. Okay. So you come out with honors. But the University of Pretoria have this weird thing where they also have an honors mm. that is also NQF level eight. If you know the national qualification mm. framework. So the, the honors degree is at the same level as the undergraduate degree. But what it does is it first serves as the first year of your master's degree. Um, so instead of having a two year master's, if you do the honors, the first year honors, they give you the, the honors degree. Okay, you can, you can go ahead without having to jump into the master's oh. instead of just having the two year master's. But once, if you've done the four year engineering degree, You've got NQF level eight, masters is NQF level nine, so you can go pretty much do a master's degree anywhere except the University of Pretoria because they will not allow you to do their masters without doing their honors, which is the first year of their masters. Oh, right, yeah. All right, all right, all right. So you completed your undergrad uh, with honors, right? Yeah. Yes. So you went straight to masters, or you started working now? You're like, no, let me go to the job. In my final year, I was approached by a professor at the University of Pretoria. Mm. Um, I had a bursa um, at the time, mm. and I was supposed to go start working. And the professor was like, you know, I've kind of seen your work you were in my class, blah, blah, blah. I'd like you to do postgraduate studies. Would you like to do postgraduate studies? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then he asked me about my interests, and he's like, yeah, yeah we'll be working, um, all of that. And yeah, yeah so I, I went into the master's okay. program directly from my undergrad i didn't yeah my the extent of my industry experience was what i was doing i did a lot of vacation work for my bursa oh. and i didn't enjoy it if i'm being perfectly honest engineering industry is a uh, they, are, they are not making money right? there's no this is like, yeah, in your undergrad, you enjoy you building all of these systems and, and whatnot. In the industry, they're in the business of making money. You're not going to come with ideas. They want, if this has been done before, we're not reinventing the wheel. Uh, we, it's been done. So what we'll be doing is, they'll still be working with code from 1990. Like, oh, this has been working. That system has been like, we're just working around it. Because like, <laughs> I don't really wear that kind of, I kind of get them because they're about the bottom line. Mm. But from my perspective, in that, it's not all. Some companies, smaller companies, you kind of get involved. But in those cases, that's the case. 
or you become like a project manager. Most engineers in industry are doing project management at different levels when you're oh, speaking okay. to people. So we're all kind of speaking to each other and just kind of figuring out what is it. Because when you've done the, the four-year degree, that's where you are. If people are thinking you're going to be out there building things, and technically you're going to be sitting in the office writing reports. And <laughs> it's a very, like, uh, it's not a very, unless you're the art company where you're actually doing things. So, yeah. So, for me, I, I just didn't see myself enjoying being a suit, like just sitting and always wearing a suit and uh, <laughs> presenting. A lot of my friends, that's their job. <laughs> yeah. The people I was undergrad with, they're, just, they're always just managing complex projects, like, what do we need to buy? And how do we keep the plant going and rub it. you're not really getting into the, the nuts and bolts of it. You're just managing a very complex system and what engineering does is it, it, it helps along that. Oh. Some gave up on engineering altogether by the way. After they graduated, they were like, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. And the kind of skills you get, your the problem solving skills allow you to pivot. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people working in finance, they're the ones, uh, especially the ones that take a, a bit longer, yeah, they just like, oh, I'm done with engineering. They will make a lot of money in the banking sector and then they pivot and then they, they're working in there and, and, and whatnot. But yeah, or consulting. So there's lots of different, once you get through and you're having this. Okay, yeah so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I also want to ask like the opportunities that you can get with an engineering degree. Like what can you do? You can do anything. Um, you can work in your diff different fields. Um, that you are, like for example, if you are in a degree at UCT here, they've got your mechatronics, um, they've got the electrical engineering and the electrical and computer, and each electrical engineering department has their own version of that. Um, I think at Tux it's electrical, electronic, and computer, blah, blah, blah. all of those people can pretty much go work in any of those, all of the fields and subfields, because you're kind of prepared along all of that. Additionally as well, a lot of people as well, once they've done the degree, they just hop into the software development side and they go do something in software engineering, etc. Because that's where they, because like you can choose, right? you're not kind of limited to one thing, you can go there and you can also go with the project management route as well, systems engineering, and you can also just decide, not quite engineering, but use your problem solving abilities to go into like a, a field that, and like I'm saying, the banking sector is a large employer. They've actually looked at the statistics. They're a large employer of engineers, not to do engineering work, mm -hmm. but they like the problem, problem solving, solving yes. that engineers come with. So they, they take a huge chunk, which doesn't kind of help with the, we have a shortage of engineers, but the banks are like, oh, we'll take, <laughs> we'll take that from you. So, but then, yeah, yeah, like it's quite broad. Like you just, the, 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 the opportunities, when I think about all of the people I was in undergrad, not one person I can think of in one field. Everybody is just so spread out, working in so many different industries, working at different levels, doing different things. So it's, 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 it's quite broad um, once you can get through the okay. system. Okay, okay. Wow. All right, guys, there are a lot of opportunities as an engineer. All right, so you did your master's, you went to your PhD now. So, like, what was your PhD all about? Mm. My PhD was around, um, it was about, I was looking, well, my broad research area was in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. but applied within an engineering context, so looking at different engineering environments. So my PhD was looking at because the more I was doing my reading to try to find the proposals, I realized that it's it's impossible to have a system that people can't hack into. Mm -hmm. And now as we, our systems are becoming a little bit smarter now, like we've got, I got a plant, you can allow for the remote monitoring and control. These days you're also adding AI, but back then it was less of a consideration, but just kind of like within the future, we're headed here. We need to have smarter systems under the umbrella of what we call cyber physical systems. Mm -hmm. So then I realized that, like, it seems like you can't have a system that can't be hacked. There will always be a vulnerability somehow. So the crux of my research was, if a person is able to get in, how can we detect them, which is intrusion detection. Mm -hmm. So how are we able to see what this person is doing is not normal. It's not what's supposed to be happening. Can we detect that this is happening? So for that purpose, we didn't want to use um, 
control model because you can do the same thing using control theory and mathematics and modeling the system the mathematically and doing that the problem with doing it from a control perspective is each system requires its own model so you need to have to model the detection mechanism of that when you use something like ai you can have it as a black box to like okay we have this is how the system is behaving and you kind of have your ai model learning what normal behavior is so it's like if these are the inputs this pump station because i was looking primarily in water infrastructure if these are your inputs this is what the output is. the pump should be on etc and whatnot so if the system learns normal behavior then anything then it can pick up what's not normal behavior so you teach the system this is what's normal and then you go about that and applying that black box model you're not limited to a specific application and you can move around so i started in water systems and we've also been seeing now you can do the same thing in the electricity infrastructure as we move to our more microgrid infrastructure these days yeah oh wow cyber security oh, wow, wow. <laughs> so guys you can help the system <laughs> <laughs> the base here everything's okay right okay okay all right so now uh you decided to become a lecturer you know you didn't want to what what motivated you to 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 become a lecturer that same professor professor hanke is still uh, from the university of pretoria yeah i think uh, i he's the person i have to thank for all of this because sure. towards the end of my masters professor hanke came to me and he's like i've been working with you for a couple of years right now there's going to be an opening in the department um a lecturing position so in pretoria the minimum to become a lecturer was a masters at okay. the time i'm not sure what it is so at the time there was an opening and he's like there's an opening in the department i think you should apply and then he's like yeah and what else? so i was like Trrr. and then he was kind of asking because while i was doing my postgraduate studies i was also um, a ta um, within both in computer science and in electrical engineering so i was quite familiar with the system okay. and he was asking me about my experience and all of that and whether i think this is it and i was just like well i already saw that industry is not for me <laughs> <laughs> so why not just try out this part of um, because I enjoy research I enjoyed research as well I had not been teaching I'd been in UT you mostly managing the courses and the practicals and what not yeah. but I enjoyed the research components of academia so I was enjoying what I was doing from a research perspective so it yeah. makes sense like for me to do because I wanted to do a PhD yes. but if I didn't start lecturing I, I would have needed to probably go to industry and start making money because otherwise I'll, I'll be stuck in the system yeah. for a very very long time and, and, and it, it, it's a, like it takes a long time to do a, a phd so it was an opportunity for me to do my phd and then i yeah i started lecturing all oh, right so you started like so you went you started uh, lecturing at you at up yes then you came to your city yes so why you city <laughs> why uct i think it's because like at some stage i had done everything in pretoria yeah, okay. i had done all my studies in pretoria i was part of the furniture yeah. <laughs> okay you know i know that field hey because like even now like i felt like a pretorian now i'm in the field and i know everything and mm-hmm. now i'm that person you probably have seen them they're probably around in cape town as well yeah i have a few i know a few people in cape town that when i was around this building wasn't here and then <laughs> yeah then there was that you know when i was uh, when i was in undergrad i became that annoying person mm-hmm. and i didn't like that I, i was like i need a new environment so that's the primary reason is like i, I just needed a change to, to just go into a new space and instead of reproducing just the best decision i ever made because then you come into a new academic environment and you approach things from a different perspective so i had learned all i could from the university of pretoria and now i'm in a new environment with new people mm-hmm. learning a new way of doing things and that's it's about growth I, i don't think i would have grown in pretoria but i don't think because i was so used to the system i was i was i pretty much grew up in the system like yeah from the time i was 18 years i was in the system so it was time for a change yeah okay okay well yeah so and coming to your city all right what's the all difference right. between BSc tech uh, BSc eng you know national diploma uh, in engineering yeah like what's the difference between the, the, the three you know that in engineering at college 
engineering at university oh, engineering okay. at, at uh, yes the this one then here's the kicker mm. the one at college if you go to a college that is not legislated under the engineering professions act which means the engineering council of south africa does not deal with colleges colleges are legislated by the department of higher education so that's a whole separate entity that deals with all of that mm. but with regards to if you go to a university of technology or university at a university of technology you can obviously do the diploma and the or the b and tech these days previously you'd have to do the diploma and then the b tech the difference between the two is a bit blurry if i'm being perfectly honest like the government is starting to kind of legislate which is why they've separated out you needed to do the diploma first and then the b tech they've separated it completely where you have the diploma and the b and tech right which are now separate and separate streams if you will those are limit your professional designation so what exa does is depending on if you do a diploma if you do a b and tech or if you do the bsc and b and or b and uh, that they found the four year one the higher you go the more complex projects you are allowed to make decision on decisions on if you are mm. building uh, for example a bridge and there's a you're going to need a civil engineer you'll need the four year degree civil engineer at the end would need to sign off on those designs by law otherwise the build, the bridge is not getting uh, built for example but obviously which is the simplest example is there in civil engineering not all structures are that complex mm -hmm. so as you go to less complex structures you have everybody filling in oh, in between so okay. it's kind of like a legal thing to protect people to kind of legislate who's allowed to work at on what kinds of projects oh. so it's but it's, it's it's an evolving kind of thing yeah. that the government is always looking into and kind of legislating so depending on all of that yeah each of these degrees are not they're in the same field yeah. but you don't cover the full broad spectrum of the same things you're kind of going to be working on different aspects even within the same project okay 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 also you are designated for a particular project you and okay yeah all right all right all right okay guys you heard that there are some differences it's up to you to do more research on this and get more info like if you choose to study bn btech you said with btech i can become a technologist right yeah so with exa you can register as a professional engineering technologist okay and if you did the diploma you can register as a professional engineering technician okay. and if you did the four-year degree you can register as a professional engineer with the engineering council okay. yeah. as a lecturer like so what is it that you think now I'm leaving that every engineering student in South Africa must know. It's definitely that it's worth it. Um, mm. We are living in a country that has a very high unemployment rate, mm. and I know that. Um, I know that uh, as we've discussed, I spent many times with my fellow classmates wondering if any of this is worth it and i can tell you that it is like when you finish the degree your life changes before your very eyes i don't know even there's, there's there's a group of my classmates who even had um a thing on social media after they graduated that life after b and was the bachelor of engineering so they had like life after b and to kind of just drive the point home is like it was it was worth it like those sleepless nights in the lab the the amount of stress and everything was all worth it in the end because the world just opens up for you and i've also mentioned the engineering council of south africa the reason it's legislated like that as well is so that your degree is recognized because engineering is regulated in every country so as part of something the south african government signed our degrees get audited by a global body which means you can go work as an engineer in, anywhere in the world in essence, um, as part of the, I think it's the Washington Accord and the Sydney Accord. So the world just opens up. Um, like it's, it's, but even beyond going abroad, within the South African market, there's a lot to do. And life is so, if ever you're an engineering student right now, 
who's wondering if it's worth all of the suffering i'd say it is and uh, that's why it's put there all you do is survive if you do survive the system the world is your oyster so that's what i have to say wow it's worth it guys it's worth it you had it from a phd graduate <laughs> Oh my God. So you can't be misled, yeah, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, every day. Well, uh, Doctor, thank you so much for having you on our channel. Uh, thank you so much, Doctor T, uh, for ha for having you on our channel. Uh, thank you so much. You help us a lot, and there are a lot of things that we didn't know as engineering student. And someone who wants to study engineering now is kind of inspired to do engineering. Thank you so much for your time on our channel. Guys, make sure you like this video. This video must get 1 million views. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Okay. Thank you.